Today we're going to talk about urban get-home bags. Things that you need in case you're in an urban environment, maybe you live there, maybe you work there, uh, you need to get out uh, with a lot of the different type civil unrest that has happened and could possibly get worse with the political climate that we live in. Uh, I think that it's really becoming divided and I think that having a good dedicated get home bag for urban is super critical. Uh, you know guys we will do a lot of bug out stuff and, and bug out bags and getting out and, and even go bags but something specifically toward urban because 80 percent of the population in the U.S lives in urban areas. Now guys, we're gonna talk about a few of the philosophies first before we get into the bag. Uh, one big thing to think about is situational awareness. Especially in urban areas, uh, you know, you need to have your head on a swivel. Another big thing, guys, is just to avoid confrontation. I mean, stay out of the way. If somebody gets, uh, wants to start something, you know, just back off, let it go. Try to get out of the uh, situation as much as possible. And holding to the gray man appearance and philosophy you know, just blend in with your surroundings. But when you are out and about, dress the occasion. I mean, just dress down, uh, nothing to really uh, bring attention to yourself. And of course, another big part is having a plan. Uh, you know, planning where you're headed, what are you gonna do? Having alternate plans when you get to that location where you see that your plan's not gonna make it. Now, there's definitely a lot of bag choices. Uh, I like the backpack, uh, it's real easy, it looks you know, people wear backpacks all the time, so, you know, you really don't stand out. Um, you can throw these on, you can get to where you're going, you have nothing encumbering you. The big problem with a backpack is if you need anything out of it, you've got to bring it around and get to it. And a lot of times you have to sit down, figure it out. And here we have the Entity. This is actually from Expedition. It was a bag especially for that gray man effect. And then you can use a sling pack. Now, this is the Maxpedition Mongo. It's definitely... The largest of the Versa packs, um, you know, you can go with a messenger bag, a lot of different styles. One of the things about the messenger bag, though, is that if you're going on a long trek, it can get really heavy. I mean, it wears on one side. There is a strap that will balance it out around your waist, but definitely not something that you really want to go a long way in. But there are some advantages to this type pack. Uh, one thing is, you know, I'm going along, I need to get to something pull it in front of me, open it up. Everything's right here. I don't even need to kneel down. I can just get right to it. Uh, the other thing is, is there's a lot of organization in this pack. A lot of pouches up front where I can just get to it and open it up. So a bag that you're gonna be working from a lot, this would be a great bag for that. As far as just basic travel and getting around, the backpack is gonna have some advantages there. And of course, you can go with a smaller pack but everything that I'm going to show is now stuffed into this pack. Hey guys, as far as my personal opinion between these two, the backpack or the sling pack, I definitely would go with the backpack. Now, unless you're going on a short distance, this is very organized. Again, it has some features, but really to be honest with you guys, this is going to be the best way to go, especially if you're on foot for any kind of distance. Now the bag with all the contents weighs 19 pounds and 11 ounces. So it's a fairly hefty bag, but yet it's not quite the size of a bug out bag. Of course, there's elements in here where you could survive. But again, this is really geared toward more urban survival. Now, first off, you need to have your standard EDC. And of course, your phone, your keys, your a flashlight, a, a pocket knife if you're allowed to carry one. You know, just the basics, your wallet. So this complements your EDC. Now, something that's really important is a belt. Uh, I really like the bull leather belts from DaltechForce.com. They're just great belts, and I've been wearing them for years. Uh, but this is a special Daltec belt. It, inside is a zipper that's been sewn in. Open it up, and in here I have cash. Uh, I would recommend a minimum of a hundred bucks. Uh, pr probably more, you know, two or three hundred dollars would be better. One problem is with electricity, uh, you know, your ATMs could be down and, uh, you know, your cards may not work. And so having cash could really make a big difference. Now, the first item of business would be a water bottle and having this filled, uh, which this one is not at the time, but having this filled with water and especially right before you get ready to go somewhere, if you're, if you're heading out, make sure that you have water. In fact, this is a clean canteen. It's all stainless. I can cook on this if I need to. And then, of course, I have my top. Uh, that I can use to keep it good and sealed. Then right here on one of the straps, I have a little sheath and I have one of the Gerber multipliers. 
I like this because you can open it with one hand and uh, it's just a good solid multi-tool. Now on the other strap, they have a built-in pocket. Here I have one of the Olight H1R Novas small headlamp, which I think is one of the best ways to carry a light, survival situation especially, because you can use your both hands, both hands free. And uh, what I really love though about this, than a lot of the headlamps, is that this can be removed. Uh, so I can use it as a regular light if I want to, I can attach it back. Also, this is rechargeable, so if I need to charge it, I can do it. Now here on the outside of the pouch, uh, I've kind of made up a little trauma kit. And to me, especially in an urban situation, you could really need something like this. Uh, up at the top, there's a little sleeve. I have a tourniquet, cat tourniquet, and then I have an Israeli bandage. Then also, I have a small little first aid kit. This is what I call the boo-boo kit has your band-aids, some bandages, Advil, chapstick, just basic things uh, just to get you through. But as I zip this open, uh, I've got a lot of things that I might need in a hurry. Uh, and I do have a fire kit, and we'll look at that in a minute, but I try to keep a lighter handy at all times, some way to start fire. This is just a Bic lighter, and it's in one of the Exotac uh, waterproof shields. These things are great. Exotac makes some of the best fire starting stuff out there. Uh, in fact, I have a, quite a bit of it because I love it. Also, I have some Advil right here, and then we have some nitrile gloves. Uh, this is mainly for, you know, first aid and, you know, not only to protect yourself, but protect those that you might have to help. And uh, I have a little signaling mirror. And here I have a small little lock pick set, but I, lock picks, especially in urban environments, could be uh, important. So, um, but one thing you want to do is make sure you test it. Here I have a whistle. I could actually put this on the outside of my pack if I need to, but you know, signaling for help if you really need it. And then right here I have what they call one of the screw pops. And I reviewed this thing years ago. Uh, it's a bottle opener, but it's also a small screwdriver. And the head turns from Phillips head to flat head. And this is just a very versatile tool and you know, screwdrivers are invaluable. Now there's a sleeve on the outside and inside here I keep a lot of things uh, that I need to get to again. And this is one of the Claris FX10. It's one of their new lights. Um, you know, I do a lot with Olight. I really love Olight. But one of the things I've always loved too is the Claris, starting out with the X-T10. That was a great light, uh, just really high lumens. But one thing I really particularly love about Claris is its system in the back. It has the press pad. You can turn it on. And then there's a little paddle that goes straight to strobe. So that's a really good option. And this one in particular is a self-defense option. You have a crenulated bezel, uh, which gives you a little bit of some, you, know, you can grip this, you can use it as an impact tool. And if you're in an urban environment, you need a larger flashlight. And if you can get one with the crenulated bezel, it's the best. Uh, now I typically don't put lanyards on my lights, but in a survival situation, I would definitely want to have that. It does still retain the clip so I can stick it in my pocket. Uh, this would be something, though, that I would stick in my pocket or have it really handy uh, if there's a lot of problems that are going around. And this is also rechargeable, and I have the cable, and I have battery backup we'll look at in a minute. Also, one of my favorite water filtration systems that's super portable is the Frontier Pro. Uh, this is a filter straw. I believe it'll filter up to like 50 gallons. Um, you just lift this up. You can actually suck here, put your straw in, and uh, you can get to water. Uh, very easily. Uh, one thing about an urban environment is you could possibly have water, but a lot of it may be tainted. And you've even got an adapter here that you can attach to a water bladder or a bottle. And so this is a very versatile tool, uh, one that I really like. And I keep these in all my packs. Uh, they have a smaller version as well, which I do keep in some of the EDC stuff. And speaking of water, uh, we have one of the tools. This is a tool that you actually can turn on water in, an, in a city. <laughs> now, you know, typically you'll look and you'll see like spigots on the sides of buildings, but there's no grip, there's no handle. And uh, this is the tool they use to turn that on. Now, I'm not advocating you stealing water from the city, but this would definitely come in handy if you're about to thirst to death. <laughs> and I believe these are called a Psylocke tool, but you can have an urban water tool or something like that, and you'll find this on Google. I got this actually from a battle box, and a battle box is just great. Then I have one of the uh, P51 uh, can openers. And of course, they've got the P38s that are a little bit smaller, but uh, if you ever find yourself with some food, you can get into it fairly easily. And I have one of these little micro towels, and this you get this wet and it expands out. Next, we're gonna look into the big zipper here. Uh, one thing that I have that I've been using a lot, 
<laughs> is a good map. And guys, you could have interruptions with internet, power could go down, a lot of things can happen, and having a map is uh, vital. And here, this is just a map of South Carolina because I live here, uh, but I do have other maps, and I keep an atlas actually in my vehicle. So if I need to, it's got all the different cities, and it's got roads that are in between. And so um, this to me, it's laminated. This is really nice. You can use other kind of maps. But guys, get yourself a map. I just bought one for every member of my family because I just recently had an issue. Uh, I'll have that on video as well. But this is uh, something that, you know, we rely so heavily on GPS. But maps are still a viable option. Plus, having a good compass as well, being able to find the direction. You know, you may be looking at your map and not really know exactly where you are. You can use your compass to at least find your bearings. And I have one of the write and rain pads, uh, being able to take notes, especially in an urban environment, writing things down if you need to. Uh, I do have pens on the inside here, but I keep this with the map. And wet wipes. This is a big one. I like the small packs. I believe this is 16. You can get them in different sizes. You know, hygiene is important. Keeping yourself clean, especially with your hands. And uh, wet wipes, to me, are just excellent. Plus, this doubles for toilet paper, just in case. And then I have some insect repellent. Now, I do want to make a note here that this bag is still set up for summer, uh, but you're going to want to adapt it to winter or summer, uh, you know, either way. And insect repellent, typically in an urban environment, is not a problem because they do spray. But this is still, you know, if you're in parks, you're in areas, having insect repellent can make life a lot better. We're going to go ahead and get this compartment open. Here I have my fire kit. Now, fire kits are something I keep around, and redundancy is the key because, you know the old saying, uh, you know, two is one, one is none. And so here I have a multitude of different type ways to start fire. Of course, my first option is the Bic lighter because it's just so easy to use. Uh, but I have uh, one of the fire rods from Exotac, and I have one of the little sparks. And uh, this is, you know, get your fire tender, uh, also, here I have one of these capsules, and this is another Exotac product, but this is excellent. Uh, this has lifeboat matches. There's a striker on the back side and a striker on the bottom. And this is waterproof already, so you could even put non-waterproof matches in here. Of course, I have my Vaseline and cotton ball tender, which, you know, is just awesome. I love it. But I also have one of the Ingalls Creek, and this is their Fierce Fire or their Tender Fire. Uh, this wood is impregnated, and it is just, it burns like crazy. It'll burn longer. And so uh, this is a capsule, actually with a fire starter in here. I'm not going to open it, but also this fire tender. And then for cordage, uh, I have some paracord, and this is on the spool tool lighter that works to, you know, seal up your ends. Plus it has a cutter. These are excellent. I love them. And then I have just some wire uh, and I, these, this is old military surplus wire, and I pick this up whenever I can. It's a nice little spool. And I have a Sharpie, and I have a pencil that I can sharpen if I need to, and this goes with my writing ring pad. One thing that I've been adding to my kits is some kind of pry bar. It's something you can get a little bit of leverage on. Uh, I really like the larger ones, very similar to this, but this is too big for a lot of packs. Um, but this is a great size. And you can really get something to be, if you need to pry somebody loose, if you need to pry yourself loose. Uh, if you need to get into something, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do with these. Now, to help with the gray man effect, putting a medical symbol patch on your bag just kind of throws things off a little bit. And so I think you do have medical gear in here. I think this definitely helps. Here we have one of the Magpul Deca pouches. Um, this is excellent. It's, it, it's really water resistant. In fact, we've submerged this in water, even though they don't purport it to be waterproof. But it's just a great little pouch. And in here, I try to keep things that I really want to secure, like my dark energy uh, backup battery source. This is one of the best backup battery sources on the market. Uh, it has, of course, a light. You can recharge. You can charge all your different items. Um, it's 10,000 milliamps. It's just an excellent charger, and I've used these for a long time. And with that, I have cables. My phone, of course, I can charge it. And then also, uh, I can charge my lights with this one. Also in here, I have uh, batteries. And these are the CR123s. This is from Thyrum. It's one of their capsules. And uh, this is excellent to be able to keep my batteries dry. Just pops up. has an O-ring seal. 
and uh, these are great. Now getting on into the pack, one thing that I've chosen, and this may be something that some of you wonder about, uh, this is of course an AK-47 bayonet. I actually started out with a Mora knife that I had uh, kind of modified, but this is the big reason why I have this knife. I think first off, you need to have a fixed blade knife. Uh, that's critical in any situation. This could be excellent for self-defense, of course. Uh, if you're in a urban environment, you may not be able to have something like this. The Mora knife might be legal, you know, I don't know. You may not be able to have a knife at all. But what I love about this is I can cut, well, it has a wire cutter right here. And so that is important. Now, if I didn't have this, I would have some kind of bolt cutters or some kind of small cutter, cable cutter uh, to supplement. But I chose this AK-47 knife because number one, it's just proven, it's rugged, and they're cheap. And of course, wire cutter. And also you can use the end right here as an improvised hammer if you need to. Of course, I have a ball cap stuffed in here, and it's one of the gray man things too. Now, it does have BCM with a star, but most people don't really know what BCM is. But, you know, whatever you choose, something that's kind of subdued, it's not really, it doesn't really stand out. Uh, I can put this on, and, uh, you know, it changes a little bit of my identity, kind of keeps me incognito. Then I have a head cover as well. Now, even though it's summertime, you know, in the evenings, places can get cold, so it's good to have a little watch cap. And then a good pair of gloves uh, because you really, you know, never know when you need to move some debris or something and you've got your gloves, it'll protect your hands. The one thing that I use a lot and I keep this in every pack are heavy meal industrial strength trash bags. Uh, you can use this for cover. You can keep out of the rain with this. Of course, in an urban environment, you're going to have hopefully more shelter around, but this would definitely be able to be a good ground cover. You can actually haul water with this. You can put things in here you can collect. Uh, I have three right here and look how small it is. But these are excellent. I've done videos on these before. I love them. Then I have a coat or a jacket. Now one of the things, there's a couple of things about this. Uh, this is one of the 511 Sidewinders. It's a great jacket uh, and there's some cool features. But one of the things about it has this plaid so it kind of goes away from more of your military look uh, even though it, it has a really sharp, almost a hunter look to it. But it still has those subdued colors, and I chose that color on purpose. Uh, if you're walking around, you can put this over you, and uh, you know you can actually change your look if you need to. And uh, with this, with the hat, and you can just walk through a lot of areas kind of unnoticed. Extra pair of socks is important, uh, and having good walking shoes. Now, I keep a good pair of boots in my car at all times, uh, but having an extra pair of socks uh, is something that you, especially if you're on your feet, for extended period of time. But I also have a tarp, and the reason why I chose this tarp is that it has mylar material on the back. So it's a really heavy duty ripstop uh, survival blanket or um, space blanket. And so this folds up nicely. Uh, I can just wrap up with this. And again, I'm not as much worried about shelter, like getting out of the rain, uh, but definitely the cold, and this will do it. It's pretty large. I could wrap up in this. So I don't really need a sleeping bag because I can wrap up, but if I need to get out quick, I can just throw this off. And I have one of the emergency food bars. These Lifeboat Food SOS, uh, These this is 2,800 calories. You can get them in different styles. They break apart. The wafers are really tasty. They don't um, induce thirst, which helps, uh, and uh, they last for a long time. I think it's usually a five-year shelf life. But if I need to prepare food, I have a small little stove here. But this is a little titanium stove. Uh, this is really excellent. In fact, I did a little video on this, um, but it's the Element stove. It folds out like this. And then you can put this at the bottom. Here at the top, I have these small little bars that fit so I can place my bottle, my water bottle, if I need to actually boil water or you know soup or whatever, and I can cook it. Uh, right here. So very handy little stove system. Again, this is Element and it's titanium. Also, I have a repair kit, a survival sewing kit, and also some duct tape. This is a small pocket size of duct tape. Found this one time at Home Depot and I thought this is perfect. I don't have to rewrap my duct tape. It stays fresh that way. This is Vigilant Trails uh, and this is a neat little kit. You can even sew leather. It has thread, needles, uh, even plastic you can repair, and uh, zip ties, uh, safety pins. This came out of a battle box. And guys, if you've not checked out Battlebox, they have some really great items. 
continually. Now here at the back, there's a zipper. This is actually for concealed carry. And in the back, I have a Glock 19. This is unloaded and uh, it's a, to me, I carry a Glock 26 as my concealed carry. And so the Glock, and sometimes the Glock 19 for that matter. So that way I have an extra just in case. And um, I also have a holster and I have a couple of extra magazines down in here. It has one of the uh, universal holsters in here. And I think, actually Maxpedition has a, an improved version of this, but it's just perfect because your gun slides down in here, it doesn't move around. You can put it in the hook and loop or Velcro field and you're good to go. If you need it, you can draw it out and it, the holster retains. But also one thing, and the reason why I put it into my concealed carry is this is one thing you may need in a hurry. And this is just a bandana. Uh, whether you have this, a shemag, a cloth, or whatever, this works for so many different things. Uh, you can, you know, it keeps the, the heat off of you. You can put it around your neck and it helps from sweat. Uh, if there is dust or smoke, you can put this over your face. Now, one thing I would say as far as adding to this pack would be maybe some kind of respirator or some kind of dust mask. But to me, this would be good enough for what I, I figure that we could encounter. Uh, having a pair of sunglasses as well for safety glasses or even clear glasses that are safety uh, in case there's a lot of debris and things going around. But um, a bandana, there's a thousand uses for it and I think this is really critical uh, to have. So guys, whether you go with a backpack, sling pack, messenger bag, whatever, whatever fits your lifestyle. You guys, something that you have the essentials there but to get you home uh, you know, you never know when something can just happen across town and, you know, just trigger some kind of social unrest. Uh, natural disaster, obviously, is one thing, too, to think about in an urban environment. And so, guys, just be prepared. Have those necessary items to get you home. And guys, if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider. It is the best resource on the web for being prepared uh, in any kind of crisis. Uh, I upload one video there a week that's exclusive to the Insider, and I'll have a link down below in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Uh, here I have one of the Magpul, I don't even know what, what is, I can't remember what that is. It's one of those Magpul things. It's really critical. It's really important to uh, having situational awareness is just having situational. Here we have the, um, this, is, this is really nice. Uh, this came out of a battle. And then I have some inspect. And then here I have some labels to return and some band-aids. Wow. <laughs> if you put a medical pouch or a medical pouch, one thing that I helps, one thing that helps with the gray man is putting a medical pouch. Okay. I can even put my little bottle on here if I need to. If I can, I'll have to probably figure out how to do that. But.